Hi, welcome back to VMworld Barcelona uh, Tech Talks with the V Brown Bag team. Uh, my name is Josh Atwell, and I'm here to present a little bit about DevOps and Power CLI and Desire State configuration. So let's start real quick with uh, what what is PowerShell DSC. Uh, PowerShell DSC is the desired state configuration. It is a declarative state configuration. So it works along the same lines of, let's say, Puppet, where you define what you want the uh, end result to look like, and the software on the back end will actually uh, do all the work for you. It's not something that you have to go out and script. Uh, it actually will understand already what changes need to be made in order to accomplish that end goal. It can be used for a variety of purposes. Uh, most importantly, it's, it's very widely used for managing and monitoring configuration state. So whenever you create the configuration and apply it, you can actually use DSC to identify when changes have been made. And if those changes to the system have been made that are contrary to what you want the configuration state to be, you can have it either report to you that the change is there, or you can have it automatically repair and fix that configuration, bring it back to normal. That's a little bit handy because that means that any configuration drift that you have can be handled while you're in bed sleeping. No one need be paged or bothered. Um, next up, you know, one of the core focuses about PowerShell DSC is really focused on enabling and, and configuring the various Windows roles and features that are on a Windows system. So PowerShell DSC, uh, you're, it's not directly scripting, so there are resources that you have to access and load into the environment, and when you load them, you can then leverage those resources and call to them in order to execute your changes. Um, the bulk of the resources that are available today are very much focused on the implementation of applications and, and um, the different roles and features that are in Windows and configuring those. Uh, now, that doesn't mean that we're limited to that because there's a great deal of other capabilities that are there um, for different infrastructure products as well, and they're at least being released. And we'll talk about a little bit in a second of how that works with vSphere as well. Um, when doing desired state, uh, configuration. One of the challenges that I think we're all very familiar with is when you have to actually do a series of events that may also require stopping and starting services or restarting services or having situations um, where you have to deploy additional software configurations. You know, Desire State Configuration allows you to do that uh, leveraging Windows PowerShell and you can also run PowerShell scripts as part of that. Uh, so if you don't have a DSC resource to accomplish the task at hand, or if you want to extend what is happening, um, perhaps you want to do some um, advanced reporting or you're know, collecting information uh, or provide some additional configurations that aren't currently available in a DSC resource, you could simply add some PowerShell to that in order to execute that change. Now, from a vSphere perspective, there hasn't been a DSC resource natively built for managing vSphere. So in order to do that, you would need to leverage PowerCLI. We're fortunate that our community has the, the mind of Luke Deakins. Uh, he has actually done some work and is presented here at VMworld. You should check out his site, lukeD.info. Um, and in his presentation, he shows how he has successfully created uh, resources that you can then leverage a pool server for desired state configuration and leverage a power CLI host to be able to execute changes in a vSphere environment using PowerShell DSC. Uh, I, I don't have the full scope of everything that he's working on, but I do know that he has provided resources for managing um, folders and folder structure so that let's say an administrator goes in and deletes a folder, you know, it will reappear automatically. Now, I, I have asked whether or not it will actually reappear any VMs that were in that folder, but that is not the case. Um, you do have the opportunity, though, that with DSC, you could extend DSC to say that all virtual machines with a certain naming convention should always reside in this folder. And DSC would be able to scan, identify whether or not that condition was true. If it was not, you could have in the resource to understand to have that moved back to where it should be. What this ends up providing is an opportunity to manage um, a VMware environment 
in such a way that you can have a great deal more agility and spend less time focused on you know, building out the configurations and the way things need to be set up and spending more time on delivering more, you know, uh, more capabilities by removing constraints that are in your, in your um, deployment model. So with this, you consider that a developer has an opportunity to you know, deploy out a system or a system of vApps. Um, they could also have in that deployment uh, requirements for infrastructure. You know, perhaps you need certain uh, distributed virtual switch characteristics or the underlying storage needs to meet a certain characteristic for performance or replication. You could apply that in a DSC resource. Uh, the other nice thing about leveraging DSC is you always have the opportunity to test to ensure that the configurations can be implemented and that they can be implemented successfully. So a few other use cases uh, for leveraging uh, DSC, uh, especially when you don't have um, the access to the resources that Luke has built, uh, one of those was the utilization of a, you know, DSC in a DMZ environment. In this use case, and I write about it in the DevOps for VMware Administrator's book, the situation is, is that you have application systems that are in your demilitarized zone, they're behind a firewall, and you don't want to necessarily have your desired state configuration pool server sitting out in the middle of your DMZ, because that then becomes a threat target to where someone, if they were able to compromise that system, could do a lot of harm because they could then be able to modify all the systems in your environment by modifying the configurations. So instead of having the pool server in the DMZ, you would consider having your pool server on the other side of your firewall. Well, managing firewall rules can be quite a pain. And um, you, anytime you open up additional firewall rules, you're opening up your risk. So uh, it's generally the tendency of most organizations to keep their DMZ as locked down as possible. So I attempted to tackle this problem by trying to identify if there's a mechanism for uh, a user to be able to use PowerShell DSC and execute into the DMZ environment to have that configuration placed. Well, the answer is really no. There's not a really easy way of doing that. So what I began to do is to look into leveraging Invoke VM Script. And what that does is it leverages the, um, the VMware tools on a, on a system, on a VM, and it allows you to execute a script inside the virtual machine without having to make a connection to that virtual machine. The connection actually happens through the VMware tools. And by leveraging that, you have the opportunity then to not have to be concerned about firewall. You know, the only trust that you have to have is you have to have sufficient cred credentials in your vSphere environment. Access to that ESXi host to be able to execute that. And then you have to have permissions on that system itself to be trusted to run that. So once you have that established, what you can do is you could run invoke VM script and tell it to execute PowerShell DSC. Well, you run into a fundamental problem when trying to do this because invoke VM script only allows you to pass in one line of script. DSC requires multiple lines in order to create the MOF file that is used to execute on and then to execute you know, the DSC to make the changes. So in order to get around this, uh, I decided that the only way to do it was to create the MOF file external to the DMZ, use the copy guest file uh, PowerCLI commandlet that is available in, um, in PowerCLI, and it will copy the file to the local file system using the VMware tools. And then from there, you can then execute that one line script with invoke VM script. And now you've had the opportunity to pass, create your management file pass it into the virtual machine and execute desired state configuration without having to um, open up any firewalls or do any unnatural acts in your environment. So now your DMZ can be protected and managed exactly the way the rest of your environment could be. This is a huge benefit because as organizations are doing their development, they develop in a separate lab or separate environment than what they publish and go to production, but they want the management to be consistent so that any configuration changes that are determined that need to be changed and found in the lab environment can then be immediately executed into the DMZ environment uh, equally as well because you can use the same exact configuration file. Um, so that provides uh, a level of uh, capability that gives the DevOps uh, organization and your developers uh, an opportunity to implement that in a, a low-cost way because DSC is free 
uh, and do it in such a way that maintains the control that they're always looking for. Uh, if you are interested in more about PowerShell DSC and how it may relate to VMware vSphere administrators, uh, I obviously would love for you to pick up a copy of the DevOps for VMware Administrators book, but also check out Luke Deacon's uh, blog at lukeD.info. You can also find resources that I talked about on GitHub. Uh, it's the DevOps for VMware Administrators uh, GitHub repo. And I also have some content on my GitHub repo, which is github.com slash Josh Atwell. Thank you for your time. I hope you have a, a, a great VM world, and I hope you enjoyed this talk.